Hey, dear humans, we love just like you. Please try to understand. We do feel like you. Future food is going to impact not just your health, not just biodiversity loss, not just deforestation, not just nitrogen pollution, not just water use. It's going to change the world. So for those of you who are eating at that end of the spectrum now, you're plant-based. You're merely the first. We talked about this before. There's been work done that show that the growth in the meat-based, the plant-based trend is exponential now. We passed the 12% globally, the 12% threshold, which is a tipping point for trends. It's now labeled as a mega trend by many, and it's the future. So, what do we do about all this? Diet change, it's empowering. Plant trees, once we get those pesky cattle off that land, we've got to do something. We've got to plant trees like we're going, like it's out of fashion, just to draw down the carbon dioxide. The, the, the London Mob I work with, the World Preservation Foundation, is about to launch a program to plant a trillion trees in the next 10 years. It's going to be one of three projects that has an ambition to plant a trillion trees, except their, their time frames are a lot longer. It's hugely ambitious. It may not happen, but if we get halfway there, perhaps we'll save the world. So, eat plants, plant trees, save the world. <laughs> Okay, governments can do a lot. They're, they're laggards at the moment, but as Barack Obama once said, they, they, he, he was being heavily criticised for not doing enough for the um, for what he he the, the platforms that he got him that, that got him elected. He was being criticised for not being ambitious enough, and he turned to the activists and he said, "Make me do this." In other words, without public groundswell, without that support, politicians aren't going to change. But if there is that groundswell, they will change. Local government can do a lot as well. Byron Shire, I was down there this morning planting trees with Byron Shire. It's, um, it's, it's, it's going gangbusters. So, that's the end. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks very much. I had a question. Um, in your last slide, you have this um, taxing the animal product. <clears throat> so a similar thing happened with like tobacco, you know, like ages ago. But there is still actually increasing consumption of that. People are aware of health implications and they're happy to pay that extra tax. What do you think would actually drive people to commit to that? Yeah. In my um, opinion, like there is probably yeah. science around that, I don't know, it's probably more like yeah. a psychological thing. But um, taxing uh, unhealthy products has been applied before, but it mm. looks like it's just not happening, like people still consume those things. Yeah, um, that, that's a really good question. What is going to drive this change? Um, I think there's going to be multiple factors that drive the change. Um, from where I sit, the environment is one of the big issues that we're facing. We are about to hit the brick wall, if we haven't already. So that will be a um, th that will be a, 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 an issue that that changes everything, and it can happen overnight. Okay, but but the other factors that are happening as well is the, the Eat Lancet Commission, for example. Um, that is hard science about health and about meat eating, particularly red meat eating. Um, processed meats now, bacon, is a carcinogen class A. That's, that's the same category as cigarette smoking, as um, asbestos. It's a known carcinogen. 
Um, the health aspect is, is another big one. Um, the cost is another. Talking to some of these guys, the, the World Preservation Foundation has interesting contacts and the big food producers, the biggest beef producer in the world is a company called JBS Beef, headquartered in Brazil. They are investing heavily in plant-based foods. And the reason is this, they supply a lot of burgers, for example, to all these chains. To, to, grow a, to get a burger to, to sell, they've got to grow an animal for three years. They've got to go through the slaughtering process. You have issues with staff, you have issues with um, uh, health and safety, you have issues with uh, diseases, you have issues with uh, animal cruelty. Um, you then got to get that, um, that product refrigerated so it doesn't spread any more E. coli and so on into and grind it, grind it up. That supply chain is, is, is too long for them. If they can replace that with um, pea protein, for example, that sits in a silo that they can call on as and when needed, they can make burgers that satisfy any meat eater with a much shorter supply chain and cheaper, that's what they'll do. So the big guys, the big meat is, is, is changing. There's, there's a fascinating paper has just come out from America. There's a, a company that, that looks at trends in technology. And what they've shown is that, well, an example of this, we can produce proteins now through, through growing them, through a, a process that's a lot like um, fermentation process. The, the company that makes uh, outdoor clothing equipment called the North Face, they now produce a parka that is, made, is the, the fabric that that's made of is produced from a fermentation process that produces a, a protein that is exactly like spider's silk. So you get this stronger than steel clothing. <laughs> the thread in this clothing is stronger than steel and it produced in a fermentation process. Now, they're, they're producing that now, they're selling those parkers. The same process is going to be used for producing food in the future. This is what this, this technology company projects. And it's gonna be done um, not in big factory productions, it's gonna be done in small productions um, to, to designer proteins. In, in other words, he, li he likens it to um, um, boutique breweries. We'll be, they'll be able to brew up this amazing steak-like beef, <laughs> you know? So he predicts that within 10 years, the beef industry and the dairy industry in America will be bankrupt and gone within 10 years. Now, this is designer breweries of proteins that, you know, we haven't, we, well, we've seen some examples, but not a lot, not a lot. But that technology is, is about to explode. So it's, it's health, it's environment, it's technology, but it, it's also a, a process of human beings waking up. You know, we, we realise now that we're not islands to ourselves. We live in a world where we depend on other creatures. If you wipe out biodiversity on planet Earth, you wipe out humanity. I, I think um, Einstein is the one who said that if you get rid of the bees, we humans have a few years left and we're gone. So we all are so interdependent that um, and that and that's a that's a change of mindset. That's a change of uh, thinking that is happening now. You know, I see the uh, the kids who march for climate change, and I think, wow, when I was that age, <laughs> was I thinking about the the world and its problems and solutions? No way. So the world is changing for sure, and. and 
and, and that's the positive side. I think this, this presentation has a very positive side. These are dire times. We're in dire straits. We've, we're hitting the wall now. But there are solutions, and we can change it overnight. The thing I see is this is a solution that anybody can do. Yes. This is a solution that you can do in your household. You mm. don't have to go and stop um, Adani digging up another mm. big um, coal mine. And everybody can do their own. And if, if a lot of people start doing it, it just will cascade. Yeah. And, and um, the trouble is um, trying, the government can be a sticker because of the mm. lobbyists in the dairy industry and the beef mm. industry. And, a lot of pigs out there. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. But it, it does, it's empowering because you can do it yourself. Mm. Without, you can just, you can start to that. Mm. Very empowering, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm completely not based vegan. Um, and I also do some of the gardening and groups, things like that. And um, it seems to be, you come up against these arguments with people. Well, not so much. I don't characterise them as arguments, but they 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 say, "Oh, you can do it sustainably." And I don't know enough about the science, but I, I don't think that's possible. So, what's you know, what's your thoughts on the people who say that you can you if you change it, you can still eat meat? Um, it's wishful thinking. Um. It's cultural as well. You know, I, I, my mind goes back to when I was doing the field work to map the deforestation. We did that for 20 years. You'd walk into, in, in Beef Heartland, for example, you'd stay the night at the, say, the Mount Coolan Hotel. And um, the first question they ask you is, um, what would you like with your steak, love? <laughs> you know, it's just culture. It's, um, it's inbred. But it can change. You know, the, in, uh, th there's a lot of... Some of the most innovative uh, milk producers and, and, and uh, flavoured yogurts and all that sort of thing that are coming out now in America, they're, they're plant-based yogurts. They're not dairy anymore. Some of the biggest names are the ones who used to be dairy but are now plant-based. Um, if there's a buck in it, that's what they'll do. And there's a buck in it now. The, the, the biggest float in, well, generally, the floats, the, the, the new public offerings in the states, the ones that are attracting, attracting the most attention are the food technology companies, and it's all plant-based. You, you might have heard of Beyond Meat. The, the shares, went on, they went for a public offering, the shares were $25 within weeks they were $150 and they're still above $100. Everyone was, pr was predicting, no, they'll crash. They didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, um, look, public opinion will change. I, personally, I, I just smile when, when I talk to people like that who are so, so ingrained in what they do, they can't see another way. But by you living your life and doing your thing, you're in their face. You can show them what is real, what's happening. It, you, don't, you know, this, this documentary that's just come out, I saw a couple of nights ago, The Game Changers. That's incredible. One of the world's strongest men who can lift nearly 600 kilograms. 600 kilograms! And walk 10 metres across the stage with this big rack on his back. I mean, that's incredible. And he, and he puts the thing down and he says, vegan power, <laughs> you know. I, that's busting a lot of myths. What, a lot of what we know, we think we know, as Arnold Schwarzenegger says in the, in the documentary, you don't need meat to be a man. That's just marketing. A lot of stuff like that, just marketing. Don't need dairy. In fact, it's really fascinating. The, the, there has been a, I, I don't know who started it, but 
soybeans have phytoestrogen. So there was a, 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 a myth that, okay, it's not manly to eat soybeans because the estrogen will go in your system. But the thing is that the estrogen in soybeans is phytoestrogen, so it doesn't act the same as animal estrogen. In fact, there's more estrogen in dairy products than in soy products, but you never hear that. And it's animal estrogen, so it does affect uh, your hormones, whereas phytoestrogen does not. Uh, sorry, yeah.